Whiteman, when you address that, if you could mention any other things that you feel would be important to us, we'd appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Taylor, to answer your question, we've had numerous complaints. And as Mr. Fincham uh, explained to you, by the Uniform Statewide Building Code, rental units fall under the property maintenance code. So when I get a complaint, I have to enforce the property maintenance code, which is part of the Uniform Statewide Building Code. My inspector and I, my inspectors and I have been to most of these dwellings. We go in, count the bedrooms, count the beds. But again, people aren't there, so we assess number of beds, number of rooms, get with the health department. We, we rely on them for complaints because some of the complaints have been that the sewage systems are overused and that they're actually um, percolating sewage gotten with them and recently here we've had a lot of those complaints we've gone with the health department they have cleared them we have counted the number of rooms number of beds but as mr fincham said um unless the sheriff's department's there on a call and they go after hours go into a house and count 15 people or 12 people then they call us but the but to actually sit there and watch the comings and goings we we, we just can't do that um so all, everything we have found and we have in the tax map file for the other properties, numerous inspections that have documented and counted the bedrooms, counted the people, got with the health department. And one or two times there was a valid complaint, but it had been abated. There are no current violations existing to my knowledge. Yes, sir. Okay. That's all right. That's all. Mr. Black? Yeah, I've got... Uh a few. Uh, first of all, I saw in reading the notes from the Planning Commission, uh, Mr. Fermera had actually mentioned parking was an issue, um, or was parking an issue. And I, I don't see on the pictures anywhere. Um, I saw pictures of the building. I don't see pictures of the parking spaces. That's so correct. If you're going to have, you know, 20 people. I mean, we don't know how many cars. Is there? Is there? A By ordinance, they'd have to have 10, two per apartment. So they would have to have 10. Are there 10 parking spaces there? That would be identified during the site plan. We, oh. we, we have not required, the ordinance does not require a site plan at this time. So we don't have a site plan. You're correct. Mr. Fumera did raise that as a concern. Um, and when they come in for their site plan, they will be required to provide 10 off-street parking spots if the board approves this rezoning. Okay. Um. <coughs> As far as um, the next thing, if, if this thing gets changed, it was originally a, um, what was it before, what was this building beforehand? Black. It was a store. Like store. A, it was an old general store. store yeah. uh, it's been vacant for a number of years. All right. Um, I guess the next question is when you go from a store to an apartment, you're, you're switching around, you need to have some sort of fire separation. Is that correct? Isn't there a code for fire separation between... Yes, sir. It's a change in use. You would have to meet the, the code requirements in terms of fire separation for uh, multifamily dwellings. And that would be not grandfathered. It would be current code fire separation costs. That's correct. They, as part of that conversion, they would have to submit um, building plans that demonstrate it meets the current building code requirements. Just out of curiosity, does Mr. Whiteman, can you, I mean, someone, what is the, what is the cost for something like that? Does anyone know? I can't address the cost figure. Uh, Mr. Whiteman and I have discussed it is feasible, it can be done, but yes, there will be a cost to do that. Okay. <coughs> um, okay. As yeah, I don't even know yeah. if that's appropriate. For right, okay. Um, and wait, Mr. The Final thing is, Mr. Chanel had talked about um, people in the Milford. Is this, when we talk about it, is this people, the farm workers, these migrant workers that are living in these? We don't address the, uh, the type of occupant that lives in the unit. Um, I, I don't know that that's really a, a valid question for us to ask in terms of, of the rezoning. You could infer from Mr. Chenault's right. comments that Mr. Dillon has workers available um, 
for farmers and other individuals. But I would not want to pose that question in terms of who's going to occupy the structure. Okay, and the final thing we <laughs> I think Mr. Taylor had mentioned the drain field. What is, by code, what would the drain field have to be designed? Would it have to be designed for 20? Is that, is that? Yes, we actually have the health department approval, which, okay. which is, includes a drip system. It's a very specific engineered system to accommodate the, uh, the five bedrooms. Okay. And it's specified in terms of the total square footage of, of, uh, of distribution area, the length of the lines, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very detailed proposal that has been approved by the health department for that drain field. Now, uh, just, and this is not necessarily this applicant, but in general, if, if, if it's approved for, say, 20, I, I mean, and then there's like 30 people living in there, is that a health department become a health department issue at that point? Because the drain field's being, I mean, we have overuse of the drain field, or, I mean, where is the, where is well, the Well, it could be, it now? becomes an occupancy, potentially an occupancy issue as well. Yes, it could be a drain, a uh, health department issue because it could lead to, to failing drain fields, okay, which then becomes a public health issue. That then becomes a building code issue if they don't have an adequate means of sewage disposal. And in some cases, it could also be a zoning issue um, under the zoning regulations that, that address occupancy. But the number 30, as an example, may be a health department issue in terms of a failing drain field. It may end up being a building issue related to that uh, failing drain field. Um, and it may or may not be a zoning issue be based upon the occupancy limits that the board has placed under the zoning ordinance. Okay. So it could be any one of a number of things. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can I address Mr. Whiteman? Yes. Mr. Whiteman, um, in terms of founded and unfounded complaints. Yes, sir. Can you speak to that regarding other dwellings owned by this um, Yes, sir. Applicant? Uh, well, other dwellings in, in the Milford area, we had, uh, we had occupancy of a structure uh, behind this, uh, this facility that's in the rezoning. It was a, lack of a better term, a shed that was converted into habitable space um, and actually I had to execute a search warrant go in post it as an unsafe structure and, and get it unoccupied um, was, it, was there um, the correct paperwork to, to make that facility a housing facility no sir no sir it was well, just done on their own yes sir well once I got with the magistrate executed the warrant saw it was habitable space I posted it as unsafe structure and it was vacated that was some years ago uh two two or three years That's ago right. um further down the road uh, at the store there are some apartments upstairs and an apartment in the back there was a complaint of excessive numbers went in again counted the bedrooms counted the beds and kind of had to assume by what the sleeping arrangements were what the numbers were and th those were all compliant i just want to know basically the founded and the unfounded i don't have to have a specific in terms of how many founded complaints how many were unfounded uh, you had 10 complaints how many of the complaints are founded versus in compliance uh, probably 20 percent founded complaints how many 80 percent unfounded 20 percent of what number like you just said 10 sir so if we had 10 20 percent of them were no 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 i don't want how many have you really had right i want to how many you had how many complaints you, had. you really had i don't understand what 20 percent oh okay the, the exact asking. number ball ballpark it a oh. hundred now 50. Uh, i would say over the years 25 maybe 30. But more recently but and of that 25 you're saying 20 percent were founded yes sir Okay. About 20% of the overall complaints were founded. Yes, sir. Okay. Then? Now, in that, some of those were health department complaints with sewage on the ground. I understand. I and the gentleman got the permit, did the fixes, and repaired them. So he abated them. Right. Yes, sir. That, that's my next question. Of the 20% of those complaints, 
how many of those complaints were abated and taken care of in a reasonable fashion, in a reasonable time? Every one of them. Every one. Yes, sir. Okay. Whenever I presented them to uh, Dylan, he got the proper permits, health department, health department inspected, and then reissued the, the operating permits. And then any building issues I had, smoke detectors, any code requirements for rental properties, he corrected. Now, now correct me if I'm wrong, but we're doing the inspections on these buildings through the county. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. If he pulls a permit to convert them, we will do the inspections and we will issue the final CO. Once the final CO is issued, we do not do active property maintenance enforcement. Right. We only do on a complaint basis. So after the CO is issued, only if we got a valid complaint would we do a reinspection. Yes, sir. But you mentioned fire, de uh, the fire detectors. Wouldn't that be part of the uh, inspection before the certificate of occupancy is issued? Yes, sir. On a new structure. Would the, would the septic system have to be approved before you have a certificate of occupancy? Yes, sir. Would you have to meet code in order to issue a certificate of occupancy? Yes, sir. So you're saying that we're issuing the certificate of occupancy and we're saying the dwelling is okay. Meet yes, sir. Okay. My, just a couple of questions, Chair. In terms of the building of these dwellings and, and time that complaints come in, is there a time when a building has been converted and then you get a complaint or is it just coming in? Randomly. Uh, randomly. Okay. We, 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 not only in this area, we get, we get them countywide because any residential unit falls under the Uniform Statewide Building Code. A private residence, yours or mine, we don't touch. Right. It's only state law requires rentals be inspected by the building department if a complaint's received. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I just have one, more, one last comment. I don't know who submitted this letter to the board, but I'm disappointed in any citizen of Caroline County who makes derogatory statements without fact about anybody. And unless you have the fact that these folks living there are undocumented and illegal, you shouldn't make that statement. Unless you have fact about there being inhumane dwelling conditions, and Mr. Whiteman said he's he's been there to look at the property, you shouldn't make that statement. And I am absolutely appalled that you'd have the audacity to send that to this board without your name. You got enough to say it, come here and say it as a person and a member of this community. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Underwood. Mr. Akers. Mr. Chairman, I really don't have any questions. Uh, you know, my thoughts are is the fact that uh, this rezoning is based on the property and based on that particular uh, facility and it's not based on the individual that's uh, applying. I don't, I don't, I didn't get your name uh, and I don't know how much interest you have in it. I don't, don't know how much control you have over Mr. Dillon or uh, what have you, but I think the zoning needs to go with the property and not with the individual uh, uh, is, is my thought process. All right. Thank you, Mr. Seeley. Uh, Mr. Fincham, what other property is going to be connected to this septic system it said it would need approval to have an additional property connected county code requires it where you have more than one residential unit connected to a sewer system uh -huh. that the board actually has to approve that under the sewer regulations of the county code so it's not another property per se it's the fact that there are five apartment units proposed on a drain field. Okay, I always thought that it was, if it was an adjoining property, as long as it was all on one, one property, all of those dwellings were approved, for, but that's not the case? No, if you have two residential, two or more residential units, in this case they are individual apartment units, mm -hmm. Two or more residential units utilizing the same private sewage disposal system requires board approval. You could make the comparison 
that um, if you had two properties side by side who wanted to use the same sewage system, the same regulation would apply. Okay. It's just in this case, you have five units on one parcel. I see that this is 1.1 acres, basically. Yes, sir. Will there be available space with this system for parking on that property with and is this, what kind of system is going in? Is it a standard septic tank, drain field? Uh, it's an engineered system. Uh, it is a drip system, a dosing system. Uh, so it that. will have your tanks. It will have a pressure system that doses the drain field. Um, but it will have the typical lines that you see with a drain field and a disposal area um, that you would typically see in a drain field. I have not done the calculations to, based on the square footage of the drain field area, and the size of the yard, it's conceived or it's possible that yes, or it's, the potential is there that yes, you've got adequate parking and a drain field area. But without it being laid out in a site plan, I cannot definitively tell you yes. And there's no secondary drain field required for this, like everybody else is required these days with drain fields? I will go back and look. It's not a subdivision where you've got to have 100% reserve. It's an existing lot of record. Okay. So I'm just asking because the new trend is we've had to have alternate sites. And it is a change of use. And it's, yeah, it is. As Tom right. said, it is a change of use. So I, I'll double check those figures for you, Mr. Seeley. I did not get a chance to, to look at that before the meeting. Okay. Thank you. That was it? Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Dillon, you didn't speak during the public hearing. May I ask you a question now? Sure. Okay. And, and I, I stopped by your, your store last week or the week before last, and in the last couple, couple of weeks. Yes, you did. Um, but we had talked before then. When you, I think when you originally got the property or, or started working on the property. Correct. And, and at that time, it was going to be a business. Yes, sir. That was your plan? To that to was my original plan. Turn this into business. May I ask you what happened to that plan? Because I don't see any business coming to Milford. You know, I'm the only one left. Everybody disappeared. All the building, everything's empty. Just your convenience store is what's left. Except my convenience store. And I don't see me putting money in there. Then just looking at it. How am I going to get it back? That's why I changed. Try to put an apartment building. Okay. And, and you, so basically, you basically own the building. Correct. You and the bank, that, that's not my business, but, but you're the owner. Yes, sir. So you either have to change it to apartments. Oh, keep on paying tax and insurance. Or use it. leave it empty. Correct. And okay. I can't keep on paying not having any income coming whatsoever. Okay. So that's why I went back to from business to residence. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That was the only question I wanted to ask you. Um, and, and there are, you know, aside from the anonymous letter that I've referenced earlier and Mr. Underwood referenced again, I'd be happy to include it if anybody says they signed it. You know, but, but we can't include it. Yeah, we can't include it if it's not signed. Um, and, and, you know, I... I understand the, the, the changes that are happening in Milford. Um, I actually bought nails in Blatt store 25 years or so ago because my uncle was doing some stuff and he's been deceased for 25 years. So I know it was a long time ago. Bobby, that was probably the last time I was really hammering something. So the, that time from 25 years ago to now, Milford doesn't have a commercial area. And that's not fair to anybody. It's not anybody's fault. It's just the reality of life. But what are we going to make it? 
And I think that's part of what we have to decide. I applaud you, Mr. Dillon, for your business know-how to be able to buy buildings. That's what you should do to make money. That's the capitalist system we have. Everybody should be happy with that. There are some other issues there that I think we need to have a little more community forum, which you may or may not be the catalyst for, but you're there and you're probably the biggest landowner in Milford. Aside from the other people who have houses, you've got more prop properties than most people. So I spoke to Mr. Fincham about this a while back, and I think some of the things we need to look at is possibly a way to make a, you know, meet us all in the middle, maybe business on the first floor, some sort of business, apartments on the second floor, something where we can look at the total number. So I'm, I've been struggling with this since I've seen it for the first time, or since I saw it for the first time. And, and I, I really think there's a lot more discussion we have to make. And, and I've said before, I'm having a community meeting on the 26th, which is two weeks and a day from today, in the community center where I want to specifically talk about Milford and Milford issues. And I'd like to at least have Mr. Dillon, if you would, come to that meeting and all the residents that are, that are in Milford, and hopefully we can kind of talk about it. But I'd like to ask the board to give us uh, at least a 30-day deferral. We've had the public hearing. We've had comments. Um, I would just like a little more time to be able to try to work something out that I think may be a benefit to the county. And that's, if that's not a problem with you, Mr. Dillon, because we have, we can wait six months and not do anything. So I'm just saying, let us wait a little month and, and see what we get. And if that's okay with you, I'll, I'll ask the board if that's okay and um, ask Mr. Seeley to make a motion for me to defer it for 30 days until we get I'll more make a motion for you, Mr. Chairman, to de defer um, action on RZ 7 2013 for 30 days. Second? I can second it myself. I'll second it, but I have some discussion. Okay. Motion made by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Underwood, that we at this time defer RZ 07 2013 for 30 days, having already conducted the public hearing. Mr. Underwood, you have a question, discussion. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, just your, just your comment about um, what the building should be, I think, is not part of the issue. But I think you've made it part of the issue. Mr. Dillon has clearly made a determination of what mm -hmm. he would like it to be. So I don't think it's for us to say that it should be a business in X on the second floor. You're right. I think that should be for, That's Mr. for Mr. Dillon to determine. And that should not be part of what we're discussing. I am in no way making that part of what we're discussing. I just mentioned that as a possibility. Yes, sir. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. That's why I second your motion. Normally, I wouldn't. Yeah, I just said normally I wouldn't. Come step to the microphone so we can hear you. When I started this project, mm -hmm. I didn't know all those back things that come up right now. I, I didn't know about that. But uh, answer your question about to have something mixed, like a kind of business into it, uh, that was bringing to my attention if you could have a, uh, a laundry mat right there. So on the plans, we made also a combination. Residential with with a uh, uh, London mat. So, so far I try hard to comply with your, all your questions. And so you've done now so. I cannot. I mean, is uh, to answer your question about how much they're gonna cost to do that? Okay, now is, this, uh, was, this was gonna be a short the comment. Right. Because I said normally I would say no. Okay. 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 But to, but, all right. So. So I just want to bring the, I, I try to bring more information to you so they'll not have okay. a question. Okay. I, I think that's a good point. And, and at this time, um, we're going we're gonna to continue to carry our motion, and I will definitely make myself available to you and Mr. Dillon for more questions. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. The motion is back on the floor. I did say normally I don't, and did, 
didn't say no. Um, is there any other discussion on the motion? And I guess my only my reason for this is I just want to make sure that we have drain field parking facilities. Uh, what the building is is irrelevant, but is all that going to fit on this footprint? Um, because we've had other drain field issues, and I don't want to be stuck in one of those later. Yeah, and and we're just we need to make sure we do what's best for the county. And and I appreciate you working with us to do that. And we will we will work with you and the rest of the residents in the area because there's more to it than just this rezoning. And I think we all know it. So we're gonna we're gonna all try to get together and kind of work through what it is. So I'm carrying the motion now. One question before we do that. Um, relevant to the motion? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Mr. I, I, I guess my my question is, and we are all concerned, I think, about the drain fee and the parking, but. Could we not approve it based on the fact that the drain field and the parking is meets code? Yeah, and that'll that'll come when we get to the approval thing. But I don't I don't see what we're going to gain by <laughs> holding it up for thirty days if if we approve it. Well, we're going to give me an opportunity to talk to Mr. Dillon further and the other residents. That's that's why I'm asking since it's okay. Okay. Motion was made again by Mr. Seeley, seconded by Mr. Underwood. No further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you again, Mr. Dillon and Mr. Uh, De Silva. And again, meeting on the 26th here, or actually in the conference room next door, and we'll try to discuss it some more. Mr. Fincham, do you have um, the hunting code? Mr. Parton? It won't be, Mr. Pardon. Go right ahead. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, as you're well aware by now, the uh, hunting with rifles larger than 22 caliber is uh, prohibited in Caroline County. There is one exception to that, and that is that they may be used for groundhogs uh, at all times other than general open season for hunting game animals with firearms. The proposed ordinance that you have before you tonight would add coyotes and feral hogs or wild hogs to the list of exceptions, meaning that rifles larger than 22 caliber could be used for these animals in addition to groundhogs. There's one other difference between the current ordinance and the proposed ordinance. And again, under the current ordinance, you can use a rifle larger than 22 caliber for groundhogs at all times, other than general open season for hunting game animals with firearms. Under the proposed ordinance, rifles larger than 22 caliber may be used for groundhogs, coyotes, and feral hogs at all times, other than general firearms deer season. So we've changed restrictions on use from general open season for game animals to general firearms deer season. <coughs> the reason for that is using the term game animals places broad restrictions on the time of year that hunters could use the rifle for the uh, exempted animals. The reason for that is that, uh, again, the term game animals encompasses many different animals. There are many different seasons involved there. Some of them overlap, some of them do not. Uh, during the 2013-14 uh, hunting season, for example, uh, using that term game animals prevents hunters from using rifles on groundhogs all the way from September 7th through March 10th. And again, for squirrel season from June 7th through June 21st. So changing the reference from game animals to firearms deer season would only limit the use of rifles uh, for the exempted animals from mid-November uh, mid to early January during firearms deer season. All of the other restrictions on the use of rifles larger than 22 caliber would remain in, in, in place under the proposed ordinance. Does not change the language regarding muzzle-loading rifles. And uh, that concludes my, my comments, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Parton. And you are saying in your request for action that, that we have the public hearing and then we basically have to wait or we can do this right away? You can uh, do it right away if the majority of the board waives the, right. the rule in the, in the rules of order. Okay. 
And I would encourage you, if you are going to do it, to do it quickly because of that yeah. May 1st deadline. May 1st deadline. Okay. Board members at this time have any questions of Mr. Parton? No questions? Thank you, Mr. Parton. We will uh, conduct a public hearing. We will declare the public hearing open for the proposed amendment to Chapter 56, Code of Caroline Hunting, to add coyotes and feral hogs. Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Is there anyone who would like to speak regarding this matter? Hearing none, the public hearing is declared closed. Board members at this time have any questions of Mr. Parton? I guess I have one, and I have two constituents here that didn't really want to speak but came to hear. And the question came up of, of vermin like bobcats during, during, <laughs> never ends, um, during non-season hunting. Are, is, is bobcat is considered a completely different animal? Do you remember, Mr. Pardon, by any chance, if that's addressed at all? I think you would, I believe you would have to add bobcats to the list. It's, it's not a blanket statement for nuisance animals. All right, I, I'm just curious. Okay. Just curious. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complicate this. I think because we're at the point in time where we're not sure what you can shoot when and. I think it is a Yes. I'm not going there now. Where'd Major Mosier left? Okay. He left. Anything that's threatening you, I think you're okay. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Parton? Um, thank you. How does uh, the board wish to handle this? Mr. Parton has recommended that if we are going to approve this, we have to uh, suspend our normal rules of order. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to uh, amend the code the, the amended chapter 56 to the code of Caroline County for hunting to add coyotes, feral hogs, and okay, let's with the ex with the uh, exception well, for good. rifles larger than. I guess we're going we're gonna to do it right. So first, um, we'll have a motion. We need a motion that says we suspend the rules <coughs> and we're going to approve this. Suspend the rules to approve this immediately. So we need, we need that first motion. I'll make a motion to append the rules and, and, and approve this this evening, immediately. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. All in, uh, discussion on the motion. The motion is that we suspend the rules we normally have, which would require another meeting before we take action. We've decided to not do that based on this motion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. 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 Mr. Taylor, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Black, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Underwood, how do you vote? Nay. Mr. Akers, how do you vote? Nay. Mr. Seely? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries 4 to 2. The next motion would be to approve <coughs> this. Would be to approve the amendment of Chapter 56 of the Code of Caroline County Hunting to add coyotes and feral hogs to the exceptions to the prohibited against the use of rifles larger than 22 caliber. Is there a second to Mr. Seely's motion? Second. Discussion? Mr. Chairman. Oh, Mr. Akers. Go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Underwood, you want to go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, uh, and I think um, Mr. Seely asked a question about bobcats. So we, we, if we make this exception, I'm sure there can, can be other exceptions. And I think that when we listen to the members of the community talk about hunting with rifles, I think um, there were many objections. I think this board took a stance, and I agree with that stance. And I just think if, once you open the door again, crack it, then the door can, can open wider. So um, I'm opposed. I'm, but that's my comment. I understand. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, and uh, when this board had a public hearing several weeks ago, a uh, month ago, I'm not sure exactly, uh, we heard from a lot of people. And I made my decision not based on the hunter saying they didn't, they felt like it was ruining the sport of hunting and things of that nature. I made my decision, and my vote was based on the, the safety of, of using these rifles in an area like we have in Caroline County, and especially the western part of the county. And uh, I don't know where 
Maybe there's a tremendous wild hog problem in Caroline County. I don't know. Maybe there is. Uh, I've not seen them, and I've not heard about them, but maybe you do need to get rid of all the wild hogs. Uh, but I just don't see the need of changing the ordinance and to make it quite confusing for people as to when they can do what uh, or something that we don't have a problem with. We don't have a problem with wild hogs that I know of. And if somebody can show me differently, then maybe I would uh, have a different thought. But again, I see no need in changing something. That is not a problem at this point. Maybe he's at least on the side. <laughs> Any other discussion? No other discussion. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. Division of the House. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Aye. Mr. Black. Aye. Mr. Underwood. Nay. Mr. Akers. Nay. Mr. Seeley. Aye. And I vote aye. Motion carries 42. Thank you, gentlemen. <coughs> um, agenda item number six. All right, we're going we're gonna to do agenda item number six. Agenda item number seven is basically another reading of the stormwater management uh, program. I've asked Mr. Fincham if we could get a, uh, if we could not do that again and just move it to public hearing, which we had already agreed to. So we're going to pull agenda item number seven off and just move it to public hearing, like we said. And Mr. Fincham, you're going to take agenda item number six. Mr. Turner, do we need a motion to, to remove that? Or? Oh, that would be a good idea. Mr. Fincham just said we could do that because we actually already approved moving <coughs> it to public hearing. And that's fine. I just want to make sure we... And I, and I, and I do appreciate How, that. You want a motion? I don't really want a motion. Okay. Mr. Fincham, go ahead. Number six. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Because we'd already done all the action. So. Um, this item is back on the agenda at the request of the board. Um, I have no additional information um, other than the materials that were provided at the last meeting. Um, I take that back. You have a couple of additional uh, items. There was a request for clarification, which um, I did respond to. Um, but as it stands, there's a zoning determination um, that I rendered. Um, and it's back for board discussion as to what action the board would like to take. Thank you very much, Mr. Fincham. And at that time, we discussed this at our February board meeting, I believe. And the, the, while we were having the discussion, I believe Mr. Underwood and I were having a discussion. And the issue was essentially we have to make sure that the proffers are adhered to. Um, that was the bottom line. Was that not your understanding, Mr. Mr. Underwood? Okay. Mr. Chairman. And now, and as Mrs. Lambert stated during the public comment section, in her opinion, that's not true. And as the BZA, I believe, was the one that did it, or who was the one that made the determination on the county side? Mr. Fincham. You as a zoning administrator. Okay. Thank you. It didn't go to BZA. That was the next step. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fincham, if you would come back, I think Mr. Underwood wants to ask you a question or two about it. Yes, sir, Mr. Fincham, I, I appreciate you making a decision. It's kind of tough sometimes to get people to make a decision, so I applaud you on that. But um, can you tell me the rationale that you used for making that decision in terms of allowing this to? As I explained in the, in the yes, sir. As I explained in the de the determination. Yes. Um, Based upon the discussion with the owner of the Evo Driving School mm. and the activities that are conducted in that school, I believe it fits under the educational aspect of the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. There are no limitations or qualifications, as I explained in the um, memo, qualifying whether it's an indoor use, outdoor use, vehicle use, or no vehicle use. And without some limitations, it's my opinion that it fits under that classification. And as such, there are two options. Um, 
one, anybody can appeal that determination to the BZA, or two, there is a legislative remedy to clean that up and any other areas of concern the board may have related to uses under a fairground. Thank you. Um, my, my concern, Mr. Chairman, is I, I, again, I appreciate Mr. Fincher making that decision, but I just respectfully disagree with his, um, with his outcome. I think clearly, based on what's in the proffer, that this is more in the line of racing. It's not really an educational format. So I absolutely disagree with his finding, and um, I'm going to ask this board to support me that this should not occur. And I, and I think we can go back to the discussion about what the proffer says and clear up the language, but certainly there is a lot of ambiguity there that needs to be cleaned up. So I, I don't think we should allow things to continue to occur until we clean it up. That's, that's my position. Okay, that's a good point. Um, Mr. Fincham, normally this would go to BZA next. I don't agree with what you said as a citizen. My next recourse would be go, take this to the Board of Zoning Appeals, which only has five members because I still have to appoint one. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and if we were, if we, as Mr. Underwood has just said, if we as the Board or Mr. Underwood were to ask for an appeal of the BZA, would that be a normal way to do things? It, it's, it is allowed under the code. That is an option. Either the, the code says any aggrieved party. So as a board member, Mr. Underwood individually could appeal that determination, or the board as a whole could make a decision to appeal that determination. That, that appeal is subject to the 30-day limit specified in the determination. OK. Thank you, Mr. Finch. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Give me one second, because Mr. Uh, Mr. Emerson is going to say something. I'm, I'm not sure I totally agree with Mr. Fincham in that the, the code indicates that an aggrieved party, a party aggrieved by the decision, can um, appeal it. The board as a whole, because it's your ordinance, can appeal it. The uh, adjacent property owners who have um, are aggrieved parties, if they disagree with his decision, they can appeal it. I don't really think an individual board member can appeal it in, in his individual capacity unless he's aggrieved because he has some, um, he, he's in some proximity to the, to, the, to the property. We could look into that further, but I, would, I, would, I wouldn't want you to think that that's necessarily a done I, I didn't know, so deal. I was going to keep going until somebody told me no. But okay. and, and there's a 30-day deadline on appeal. Mr. Fincham, would you do me a favor and, and walk back a few rows and ask the gentleman in the hat if he expects to see Evo Driving School anymore this year? Or the one that just took the hat off? Mr. Dillon, good to see you, sir. And I, I do appreciate your willingness to come and talk to us. My pleasure, gentlemen. Um, and actually, I didn't come to, to talk to you about this particular event. I just came to be part of the community, but I'm glad to have the opportunity to visit with you. Um, yes, the driving school would like to have the event later this year. I didn't come prepared to talk about this particular matter, so I, I don't know the date, although I think it is in the spring. Um, I, I just want to let you know that this is not an event that Commonwealth Fairs and Events or the State Fairs Put this, we do not put this event on. This is a facility rental. So Evo Driving School is coming to rent our facility um, to put this uh, educational program together. Um, one, just to get, and a kind of a comment along the side here is that I think to a reference made on education earlier tonight uh, with regard to horticulture, um, this is a, a driving performance school. So people learn to drive their vehicles in a performance manner but there's no racing involved. They can go race later if they'd like to, just as, as if we were to teach you how to do uh, horticultural practices, you could go grow whatever you want to later. So again, I think that's the analogy that I would like to leave you with, is that we don't believe, and cer certainly the management of 
Meadow Event Park would not do anything to violate the, the proffers of the, or the zoning intentionally. Uh, if we thought so, 